What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you guys are doing well. So a couple of weeks ago, I did my top picks for the best special, epic, and legendary weapon. And I think it's time to do one for the cabins now. Now in Crossout, we have so many different cabins. I remember the time when we had so little cabins, but now we have so many epic cabins, so many legendary cabins, and it is very overwhelming if you're a new player or if you're just a free to play player with all these different options. Now, like I mentioned in my last video, I love the tier list format, but I think the videos are a bit too long and the information can kind of get lost. And that's why I'm doing this format where I give you guys my top picks and also explain why. Now, I will be skipping over the common cabins and the rare cabins because in the battle pass for new players, Birth of a Legend, I believe you get access to the Growl and the Wyvern cabin. And those are already pretty solid rare cabins. And even if you want to try out something else like the Trucker, they're not super expensive. Sometimes people use the Bear cabin to seal club because it's a pretty low power score and it has a pretty good mass limit. As for the special cabins, I was never really a fan of them. I would say just save a little bit more and skip over them and get your epic cabin. Nowadays, the special cabins do come with perks, but they're not really amazing. The only special cabin I like is the hot rod cabin just because of its size and it's easy to build around. So in my opinion, I would say just skip over the special cabins. Now for the epic cabins, we have all kinds of different options. And let me know in the comment section down below which epic cabin you got first. And personally, I think the best cabin to get as your first cabin, if you're a new player or if you're just just getting your first epic is the Omnibox cabin. The Omnibox cabin also got buffed recently, and this cabin is just really versatile. It has four different perks. In the first mode, it increases your maximum cabin speed by 15% and the maximum power by 25%. And in the second mode, it accelerates cooling by 20% and the weapon reload also by 20%. So this is good for overheating based weapons like machine guns and shotguns. And it's also good for reloading based weapons like cannons. And if you just want some raw power and speed, this cabin is also pretty good. And with the recent buff to the Omnibox cabin, the default reload buff is better than the one you get from the Hadron if you don't use a key or something that shoots really fast. The Echo gives you 50% faster reload, but you gotta charge it first and it only lasts for seven seconds. It's even better than the Deadman's reload boost because they nerfed this a little bit a while back. And that's why this would be my first pick if you're looking for a good first epic cabin. Especially if you're still figuring out what kind of weapons you like. I mean, you could use machine guns, cannons, shotguns, whatever you want. But if you don't care about reload and power and speed and all that stuff, I would say the second best good cabin to get as a beginner is the humpback cabin. Now the humpback cabin is a little bit slow. You might not be able to catch up to all the targets, but if you add an engine and maybe some Sabbath wheels, you can become a little bit faster. The perk is pretty easy to get to. You get 30% more damage if you have received a thousand damage and a lot of weapons in the game deal a ton of damage, so you'll get it in no time. Now, the reason why I also put the humpback as my second pick is because I'm pretty sure you guys are all aware. Right now, Crossout is in the brick meta phase. Every build that is effective is essentially a brick and the humpback cabin is great for carrying all that weight. We have a mass limit of 20,000 kilos. Not the most you can carry out of the, all the cabins, but for epic cabin, it's pretty respectable at 382 coins. Oh yeah, by the way, this one is only 390 coins. So not super cheap, but also not super expensive. Because if you move up to the legendary cabins, ooh, oh my gosh, cabins can get up to 3,500, I think even more, 4,500, so yeah. For Epic Cabin, it's pretty solid for what they do. Now let's say you got some deep pockets and you wanna buy a pack, I would recommend the Catalina pack or the, the pack with the Catalina cabin because the Catalina cabin is still one of the best cabins in Crossroads. Even with all the nerfs, this thing, once you got the 10 stack, ah, really, really awesome. It is a light cabin, so your top speed is a lot faster, but your mass limit is not that high. And this cabin is also really good if you plan to do a lot of raids because the damage perk is really helpful there. The next cabin, I wouldn't really say it's a must have cabin, but it is a lot of fun for me personally. And that is the cockpit cabin. Of course, you're gonna need some boosters to make the perk work effectively. But as you guys have seen in some of my recent videos with the cockpit cabin, this thing is amazing, especially with some buggy wheels, oh man really really fun cabin not as effective as the other cabins you can get but just fun just pure fun the next cabin is kind of a hidden gem people don't really utilize it that often anymore but it's still a very powerful cabin and i still use it often and that is the urbac cabin now with the urbac cabin people stopped using it a bit since the introduction of the cryogenic uh, mechanics 
because it's a hard counter to this cabin spurt because this cabin spurt is just amazing it gives your whole build 21 percent damage resistance if the perk is maxed out and if you combine that with the averter or a omomori and the finwheel engine it became so powerful but now with the cryogenic effects it will negate that but people don't really use the yotun and the narwhal that often so you might still be able to get away with using the ermac effectively in pvp and other types of game modes speaking of game modes this list is mainly for pvp if you plan to do clan wars there's a bunch of different cabins that are a lot more effective than the ones i'm recommending and like i mentioned in the beginning this is basically aimed at people that are new to the game or just came back and there's a whole bunch of cabins and they don't know which one to get now there are two more epic cabins i would recommend getting but it really depends on what you're gonna be using the first one is the harpy cabin the harpy cabin also has two perks it increases your volume of ammo and micro factories by 50 percent and it boosts your explosion radius of weapons by 20 percent so basically if you're gonna use a weapon with explosive damage then the harpy is also pretty solid if you're just gonna use machine guns then the harpy is not really that great and the next cabin that i would also recommend is the step spider cabin but only if you plan to use a lot of rocket launcher type weapons because it's a really really good cabin for that now if you take a look at the rocket launchers in the game it doesn't work with the trombone doesn't work with the toe nest hurricanes or pyre i'm not sure about the header and it doesn't work with the flute but the other ones the Snowfall, Crickets, Waltz, Helicon, Lucifer, and all these rockets, the Step Spider is great for. So it's also a cabin with limited uses, but if you plan to use rockets, it's really, really good. Now, before we go to the legendary cabins, I'm going to quickly cover the other epic cabins I didn't pick. The Dust Cabin basically only works with the Pyre and the Hurricane, and it's only effective on the Pyre, basically useless. The Dust Cabin recently got nerfed. It is still quite fun, but... It's not as effective anymore. The Blight Cabin only works with flamethrower weapons, and right now we have better options. The Icebox Cabin, the Humback Cabin, and the Yokozuna Cabin do a better job than the Blight. The Cerberus Cabin got nerfed. I don't know why. It was perfect as it was, but it got nerfed. It's still okay, but it doesn't really do anything that special. The Terraro Cabin is actually a pretty good one. If you plan to use guns with a lot of spread, it makes the accuracy a lot better. So this is this is actually a pretty good cabin as well. The Deadman cabin is still pretty good if you want a light cabin that reloads your weapon faster. But other than that, it doesn't do anything special. Back in the day, if you had one weapon mounted on it, it would make it reload really quick. But they changed that, so it's... Mm. Nothing special about this cabin. The Manitao cabin, they're planning to change it and it might become a little bit better because right now it's pretty garbage. The Jadabi cabin is actually also pretty good, but personally, I find it hard to drift, get the perk and shoot at my targets. At, at this just doesn't work for me. The werewolf cabin is kind of fun because when you explode, you leave a little fat you drone behind, which is sometimes a little bit effective, but you know, nothing special again. The aggressor cabin is pretty decent. It's just hard to utilize the perk. The favorite cabin is pretty decent. The perk doesn't really stand out anymore. Nobody really uses it. It's a cabin that works with overheating based weapons, but you got ra radiators are already so effective. You don't really need this cabin. Now the howl, the howl is a tricky one. The howl is not that bad, especially for whoa it's really expensive now i don't know why it used to be 300 coins it's not that bad it's actually pretty decent but the perk could use some tweaking i would pick the humback cabin over this cabin because it's also cheaper and you get 30 percent more damage a lot easier too the kente cabin gives you a speed boost i see a lot of people use this cabin personally i don't understand what the fuss is about why it's so effective but it just gives you a speed boost and that's it the ghost cabin is actually pretty good too but you need cloak to activate the perk and it's just an annoying cabin to build around the call cabin is for drones only and it's nothing special the quantum is pretty solid for energy weapons but in most cases you will get hit by something fire cryo a um, random rocket so you won't be able to use the perk the photon cabin is pretty good if you plan on using triggers destructors or auroras other than that can't really use it i've heard that the beacon 11 is pretty decent i haven't used it yet so i can't really comment on it they're planning to change the echo perk it's going to be a lot more effective so maybe after that the echo might be a good choice as well i personally think it charges way too long to get the perk and if you don't have the perk this cabin is basically just a cabin without a perk the savior is just trash the ice bus cabin is pretty good but you're limited to limited turning angled weapons for example these machine guns these shotguns it also works on the snowfall and these flamethrowers the remedy and the draco so it's a pretty solid cabin but you only get 20% more damage, while the humback gives you 30% more damage. The Hyukin is pretty good. I've never liked the cabin, but it's pretty good. It has a lot of pushing power. 
perk is pretty useful and there's nothing really bad to say about it i'm just personally not a fan of it and then we have the bastion capital which is actually pretty solid the front plow gives you a lot of protection but i only use it on specific builds so for the builds where you will be able to use this effectively is kind of limited in my opinion but it is a pretty solid cabin as well we don't have a lot of legendary cabins and i only have three picks left recently i've been playing a lot of clan confrontation and a little bit of clan wars and I've noticed that the Griffin Cabin is actually pretty powerful. Hiding yourself and your teammates off the map really messes with the enemies. I've been using the Griffin Cabin a lot recently. And also it prevents you from getting locked on by missiles or the Caucasus. But I'm not 100% sure about drones. Also, if people use radar detectors or verifiers, they can't see you on the map when your perk is active. The only way I think they might see you is if someone uses the Hippogriff Cabin. My next choice would be the Beholder Cabin. It's a less popular cabin now. There's a lot better options out there, but I think it's still a pretty solid cabin. You get a free cloak installed into it. The duration is not that long, but I still think it's a pretty solid medium cabin. It's also pretty easy to build around. And my favorite legendary cabin is the Hadron Cabin. If you use any reload base weapons, and if you have access to a King Mine, you can make them reload extremely quick. And it's a super popular cabin amongst almost every player so also definitely worth picking up as for the other legendary cabins the cabby cabin is pretty good you can counter the spark thermal effects and cryogenic effects and it can also make projectiles that are stuck on you fall off like the enlightenment the nest and things like the cap can and it is the second fastest cabin in the game right now so actually not a bad choice to get either i just personally don't use it that often next up we have the chronos cabin which is the fastest cabin in the game right now i'm personally not a big fan i think it looks ugly and the perk is dependent on something you don't have control over you need carcasses for the perk to charge so i don't like that very variable i've seen people use it and i guess it's all right i just don't think it's that amazing the whaler cabin is also pretty solid i just personally don't like to build around it and the shape is also not my favorite it, it really slaps with specific weapons like cannons and auto cannons but not really a fan the hippogriff cabin has limited uses but you can make some nasty builds with it fun fact you can activate the perk see the enemies through the walls and then lock your hurricanes and nest onto them which is very very sneaky the mutant cabin is a drone cabin and the only drone that kind of works Good with it is the fuse drone but the problem is the cabin's bar score is way too high and fuse drones are not that effective at like that game bar score so i just use something else the master cabin is pretty solid it can also repair your weapons and it doesn't depend on carcasses it's just that the shape is odd and it's a bit slow other than that it's pretty solid the nova cabin is pretty solid it's just a bit slow the perk has a like energy shield, which is pretty effective. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It's actually a pretty solid cabin. I would say the only thing about the Nova cabin is it only works on hovers and mechanical legs. Doesn't really work on ground vehicles with wheels. The Mars cabin is very powerful, very popular in clan wars and uranium wars. At the moment, almost everybody is using it. Nothing really bad to say about it. It's just really good. I just don't like the shape of it, but that's about it. The Yukazuna cabin is also used in clan wars a lot by almost every clan, also in uranium wars, because that speed boost is just so good. But they plan to nerf it, so it might not be that great anymore. The cohort cabin is pretty solid. You can carry a lot of stuff, but you can only protect yourself for a little bit. And then the cooldown time to get the perk is a bit long and it can get countered by cryogenic effects. So I don't really see people using this a lot unless they need to carry a whole bunch of weight. And the machinist cabin, really good perk. It's just annoying to build around. So yeah, those are my top cabin picks for Crossout. I would love to know which cabins are your favorite in the comment section down below. If you guys found this video informative or helpful, please consider to leave a like or subscribe to the channel if you're new. I hope you guys liked the video or found it informative. And if you did, I hope I earned a like and a subscription to the channel. If you guys want to see more, you can click on one of these two videos over here and I'll see you there in a minute. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace.